All right, guys, so I'm going to show you why it's important with Hyper-V when you're dealing with virtual machines to take regular snapshots. So as you can see here on the screen, I'm actually setting up a Server 2016 virtual machine. And once it's done, we'll carry on from there. I think the main question is, I mean, when to clone and when not to clone. And the honest answer is you should always clone when you're about to make a change or a big change in a server environment. Um, and it's basically like a backup. It's a level of redundancy. So if you make a mistake or if the machine makes a mistake, you can actually go ahead and, you know, rectify that issue very, very quickly. So as you can see, then this virtual machine is about to boot up now. I'm just going to disconnect the ISO. It'll ask me to enter an administrator password for server 2016. Now, first off the bat, I mean, that's a pretty important piece of information going into the server there. You're creating the local administrator account on this server. So I would recommend, because it's a change, it's a setup stage, to actually create a snapshot before we enter that administrator password, just in case you forget it, just in case you actually mistype the password twice. Uh, and it saves you a lot of hassle when it comes to resetting the password. So, as you can see, the virtual machine is nearly ready. It's booting up on its second phase now. And it's about to ask me to enter the default administrator password for this server. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is go to Hyper-V Manager, which is running, obviously, in the background. We're going to right-click on the virtual machine instance, and we're going to click Checkpoint. Okay, give it a few seconds. And there we go. Production checkpoint created. Okay, so that says there that obviously it's running, wasn't included various different bits of information because obviously it's running, but there we go, that's created. So as you can see underneath under the virtual machine here, you have checkpoints, and if we need to, if we have a problem, we can right click on this and apply. Now what that will do is it will stop the state that is running now and obviously revert back to this stage. So let's test that. Okay, so we'll type in a password that I actually want it to be for the local administrator okay that's set now let's pretend that i've actually forgotten i just can't remember that password for the life of me i really can't uh i can't think of what the password is i'm not too sure so what you do is you go back here you'd right click and apply and you'd apply the checkpoint just wait a few seconds you can see it grays out the vm and it come back on starts do 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 let's start back up and are you ready for this we're back where we started how cool is that so let's go ahead and go back in here and I'll show you another good example of, of this so enter the password I want it to be finalizing your settings now, in theory, we could obviously delete that snapshot because that's just an example. So delete checkpoint. Yeah, because obviously we've, we've surpassed that now. We don't actually need to do that. Finalizing your settings. There we go. So let's go ahead and log in. Control alt delete. And I'll log in with my credentials that I've just set. I'm also going to bring up task manager so we can see what this system's actually doing, what the host is doing. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so the next main reason for doing snapshots or checkpoints is the idea of a new installation of software. So say you're doing uh, a new Office package, or um, in my instance, I'm gonna do Windows updates. So in this case, I'm gonna create a snapshot or checkpoint. It creates the checkpoint. And then I'm going to go to the settings here and check for updates. But what happens if I can update you've installed actually messes up your server or um, it actually has a recall on it. The update has been applied to your machine, but obviously is then recalled later on by Microsoft. Well, if you've created a, a checkpoint and snapshot, you can actually revert your system back if you know it causes damage and um, obviously not have to worry in that respect. Obviously, you could remove it from the view installed updates tab as well in the control panel but in this instance I'm just going to demonstrate that the idea is I've created a checkpoint prior to doing the updates 
now the updates are applying and valid installing but if that had failed you could obviously then go back and then do the updates again but obviously pick the ones you want through the advanced options and obviously save yourself that pain and the the suffering you were having So there you can see the updates are actually applying to this machine now that have just been downloaded and installed. And um, yeah, so we'll just demonstrate the idea that you can use the snapshot checkpoint to go back to a time before the updates are actually applied. Uh, if you found that the issue, you know, began with the updates. And that's a great example of why this is very useful. So there you can see the updates are actually applying to this machine now that have just been downloaded and installed. And um, yeah, so we'll just demonstrate the idea that you can use the snapshot checkpoint to go back to a time before the updates are actually applied. Uh, if you found that the issue, you know, began with the updates, and that's a great example of why this is very useful. Right click on the checkpoint, obviously apply the checkpoint to go back to that point in time. Um, now that is great for most scenarios. If you remember when you have two servers replicating with each other, two domain controllers that have uh, DNS, DHCP, Active Directory, um, various other roles and features. Um, obviously one will be the master holding the schema and the FISMA roles and one is obviously just a member server uh, or a domain controller but obviously it doesn't hold the schema or master, um, hold the schema or the roles. Um, it's just like um, a load balancing server effectively. You've got to remember if you start restoring snapshots or checkpoints to those, you can actually mess up um, the replication between the two servers. Um, in that case, it's probably better to do full system backups um, or an image backup as opposed to a, a, a virtual machine VHDX image backup. Anyway, I hope this has helped you out, guys, and given you an insight into a couple of the reasons why you would use checkpoints on servers. Um, it can obviously be used on client computers as well. The same kind of scenario applies, but obviously in server infrastructure, it's quite important to have or retain backups uh, or ways of kind of going back in time if you need to. And um, yeah, I hope it's helped. I'll catch you later. I'm Jake Billing. See you later.